Real Estate Agents. Welcome to the Weekly Closer. I'm your host, Jeff Underwood, along with my co-host, Joey Sampaga. How are you doing today, Joey? I'm doing good. You know, I just noticed there is a room full of J's in here. Indeed. Oh, you know? You're absolutely right. <laughs> oh, wow, that's that right. That's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. That's crazy? Yeah, we, we've got some great guests with us in we the house. Do. We've got Jeff Caton, Jake D'Angelo, and James Worley with R3 Home Group at Deluxe. Realty, how you doing, guys? Good, yeah, good. Thanks for coming in. Thanks it for having Jay's. us. We got J- yep. Joey, oh, Joey, Jeff, Jeff, yeah. James. That's going to be it for the rest of the show. Jake. There's going to be no. If your wow. name doesn't start with J, you're not invited yes. anymore. Crazy. Sorry, that is crazy. That's never happened. <laughs> that has never happened. So, how are you guys doing? Good, good. Yeah. How are you guys? 2020's been a good thing. Yeah, I think it's been starting great. strong. Yeah. Starting very strong. Mm-hmm. Good, good. Yeah. You guys done anything fun the first part of the year? We had um, we had our uh, event in Deluxe, which was the Feed My Starving Children. That was kind of okay. cool, right? It was kind yeah. of an interesting thing to go over there and do that. Um, but we've all hit the ground running pretty fast, pretty hard. All right. Well, you want to take a second. I know that you've been on the show before, yep. but go ahead and introduce yourself again to the agents. Yep. Um, how long you've been in business, what got you in the business, and then if you want to help introduce the, these two, that'd we'll be awesome. It. So Jeff Caton, I've been in real estate now uh, four years. I was in the tobacco and fine wine business before, sold that, got into real estate. Um, started with a big company, moved over to Delex Realty, just right in March coming up is our one year anniversary at Delex Realty. Uh, came over with a couple partners of mine, started our team over there. We're now the largest team with Delex. Um, I just uh, closed our Mace office and we're moving to our brand new state of the art office in Chandler and Kyrene Chandler. Wow. But a couple of our guys, we, yeah, thanks. It's good. It's a real. It's going to be a sweet office. Um, two of the guys I work with uh, on our team. I couldn't bring anybody. Obviously, I, there's no more people. Jays, right? <laughs> Joel. Joel. Oh, oh that's Joel. right. Joel. He's already been Jesus. on here before. Jesus. Jesus. Oh, that's right. Oh my God. Uh, all right. Well, okay. Well, there's only two. Wow. The room's not big enough. You guys enough are going to go back and look and be like, hey, yeah. everybody's. The room's not big enough for any more Jay people. But I've got James and uh, Jake here on the team. So James yeah. Worley, Jake D'Angelo, uh, two younger guys on the team. And um, I'll let them say something about themselves. Yeah, how long have you guys been in the business? And So I got licensed doing? last year. Uh, around January, I went through school. And then February, I got licensed. And then started off at Keller Williams. And then met Jeff, Joel, and Paul liked what they were doing and stayed stayed in contact with them and then they gave me the invite to come over to interview them for the team so jumped on with them and haven't looked back since all right wow. cool yeah similar story so <clears throat> this is my second year uh, in the business it's my first time full my first year full time um, but same deal was with Keller Williams met Jeff a long time before that Jeff was actually my agent when I moved here from out of state <laughs> really so I'm that guy that I I mean we saw a good 75 oh, yeah. properties yeah crazy amount of oh, wow. <coughs> you're I, that I, guy I'm I, that, <laughs> I'm par- I, yeah. kill him. I was like yeah. he's not gonna move to Arizona he'll stay in Oregon <laughs> you so, know if you would have picked one of the first five you would have got a nice big old case of wine I and know some, uh, I know some custom cigars right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah right so yeah so thank we, you my friend <laughs> yeah <laughs> I feel bad hey we put some offers in it just it didn't, 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 didn't work through, yeah. Yeah. didn't work out but uh, we spent so much time together that uh, ended up becoming friends. He actually married us, my, my wife and I, oh, in Vegas. Oh, was that recent? Yeah. Because well, I remember seeing pictures. Right. So well, we, he's, got, yeah. he's like a professional wedding guy I'm a professional ordained now. minister. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Awesome. So I do my part-time. But I, Jake was my very first uh, person I married. So. Yeah. All yeah. right. So and then you guys Jake got and divorced. And yes. Right, no, they're yeah, still yeah, together. It's, no, no, man, still, you, you yeah. said Jake is the very first person I married. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, oh, yeah, it's, right, it's right, right, right. It's still amicable, marry, though. We yeah, have a good yeah, working relationship. Yeah. <laughs> we're still friends. <laughs> uh, so after that, uh, I have always wanted to get my license, so I did it, and I basically followed him wherever he went. So right. here we are. Yeah. 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 For better or worse. worse. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> still death to his part. You must That's have left fun. a good impression on him, Jeff. I hope so. Yeah. Because usually people get into the business because they didn't like their real estate agent. Yeah, we hear that more often. Yeah. Really? Yeah. 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 Yeah, a lot of people, really? that, I a lot of guests that. that have been on said they got into the business because their first experience hmm. with a real estate agent was so bad that I'm a professional realtor, my friend. <laughs> I'm amazing. I'm Mr. Amazing. A seriously. real tour, not a real uh, tour. Yeah. Real <laughs> tour. Yes, that's right. <laughs> so the team is growing. So what are you yep. up to now? So we have um, have uh, 12 agents on our team. We have 10 uh, full-time agents, two part-time transaction coordinator. Um, I, I really like the team aspect of it. We've mm-hmm. talked about this before. Mm-hmm. I think we can help our customers at a better, at a higher level being on a team because there's just really no downtime for us. I mean, you can you know, go on vacation, 
You can be with your kids. You can do the things you like to do. And still we have the people that you can call to handle, yeah. you know, showings or something that comes up. So it's really, it's really nice. And then of course, uh, we all get together every week and have our team meetings. We all learn from each other, you know, failures <laughs> and successes, mm -hmm. which is good. Um, we had our broker, uh, new broker came over uh, from another company to uh, Diddle X uh, this month, Michael Hofstetler. So he was at our meeting yesterday. Uh, it's just a great learning environment. I feel like you you can progress stronger, faster, quicker being on a team uh, than just being a single agent because you've got to reinvent the wheel and do everything yourself. Yeah. I agree, right? especially being a new agent, yeah. newer agent. I, I mean, I couldn't have done it the transactions I did without you guys. It just yeah. wasn't, especially being part-time, just yeah. wasn't possible. Yeah, So mm -hmm. absolutely. I think finding a team that actually has a good team dynamic and not just somebody's excuse to get into your pocket is important too because mm -hmm. there's a lot of teams that everybody's kind of going their own separate ways and mm -hmm. nobody's really working together. Whereas with us, you know, like if I need something, it's easy to call each other and, you know, they're very supportive that way. So I Absolutely. think that's a, a crucial yeah. piece of that that puzzle is making sure that the team functions as a team and not as a bunch of individuals who say, yeah, we're under this umbrella together. Yeah, no, that's great. And so you decided to get your own office, huh? Well, well, yeah, a, so a, a different office. Yeah, different office. Yeah. So, you know, we were with the big company. We all went over to Delex. Uh, we were at the Mesa branch because, you know, Delex was basically Delex and U.S. Preferred, the combined mm, forces okay. a year and a half ago, so on. Um, and they had an office in Mesa, which was nice, but it was a little older and the lease was up. So uh, the company made a decision. It's time to close that office. And we found a great space down in Kyrene and Chandler. So that's going to be our new kind of flagship state-of-the-art office. Yeah. So, yeah and that's kind of your good. neck of the woods anyway. It's yeah. actually Didn't perfect. Didn't you do a lot yeah. in yes, 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 yes. <laughs> really. I mean, for our whole team, um, I think Jake travels a little further. Um, clo yeah, my trip doubled in time. It went from seven minutes to 14 minutes. Right. Oh. So oh. I feel, so I feel, little, I feel bad. bad for Jake. Yeah. Chelsea has to go a little further. But most of <laughs> but us, you know it's you a little bit closer. You cut that down if you just drive faster. That's true. Right. No, yeah, just, yeah. Uh, you know. Buy a second property. <laughs> Sleep in the office. <laughs> you can right, exactly. borrow one of his motorcycles. Right. There yeah. you go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Great. You still riding bikes? Great idea. Uh, you know what? I haven't been riding bikes as much. Okay. I've just been busy. All right. You know, real estate's been, because uh, I had to kind of reinvent myself from the, you know, fine wine spirits, tobacco age into real estate. I think I've done a pretty good job, but it's just, it, we're, we're busy. I mean, we work. Yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah. I see you all over Facebook, yeah. too. You're working, too. <laughs> Trying to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think my wife doesn't know if I work or not. That's, That's usually really. how she asked me. She's yes. like, "What'd you get done today?" <clears throat> like, don't worry like, about. Oh it. wait, what's for dinner? <laughs> Look at it, honey. Do you see the out. maniac shirt? Do you see the wrestling mask? <laughs> of course, I did. Something I threw that. Today. I throw that on like five minutes before she gets home. I'm like, <laughs> 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 no. uh, uh, so tell me, how, how's like so 2020? Right? How's business right now? What are you seeing with buyers, sellers, the market? What's going on? I mean, the market started crazy up. Mm -hmm. um, is is I mean, there's obviously a shortage of of inventory, right? Yeah. Um, demand's up slightly, but inventory's down substantially. So if, you know, if you've got the listings, that's 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 the way to go. Um, yeah. Working with buyers is just tough. It's just crazy right now. Mm -hmm. Trying, you know, with escalation clauses and uh, contingency, you know, yeah. waivers, appraisal, wa you know, it's just, it's it's been nuts. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Are you seeing appraisals I mean, some challenges there with them coming back or you seen? I, I don't know. I don't know that it, it really matters right now. People are just waiving the contingencies. They're just Got saying it. they're just finding a way. I mean, most likely because they have equity in their, their current home that mm -hmm. they're selling that they're just coming up out of pocket. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, you still it's have to figure out a way to win, win the offer anyway, before you even get to that point. Mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of seems to be the pathway right now is super strong offers with waiving every every yeah. one of your rights as a buyer unfortunately hmm. now you yeah. mentioned the escalation clause i don't know if you guys want to share anything about that yes i'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll tell you so the market is is very different different right now yes. so i do not believe there's a, a I mean, there is less homes for sale, but there's still quite a few houses out there. When you do an MLS search, I know, Joey, we just spoke about this before we started. Yeah. When you do an MLS search, you pull up properties. They come up. Mm -hmm. But when you look at them, most of our clients look at those and go, wow, uh, older, not in good shape, little run down, dirty, messy, doesn't seem to be worth three and a quarter, 280, mm -hmm. 410. Yet yeah. the neighbor's house that was beautiful sold for that same amount. Mm -hmm. That's probably why they listed it for that. Mm -hmm. And when you find the house that's gorgeous mm -hmm. in almost any price range, we're finding below like 500 even. You know, some of those houses that are super nice go quick. Mm -hmm. When you find just the gem that comes up, 
it is crazy busy. We've had an average of 14 showings, 14 to 16 showings the first day. Paul just sold one, listed in Ahwatukee for 310. Um, got a, a substantial above ask offer with raving wow. the appraisal contingency. So, I mean, it's just it's just crazy what what people are doing. And if you're a first time home buyer that doesn't have a lot of cash, mm-hmm. and you're competing with people that are like, wow, this house is really nice. You know, it's where we want to be. Mm-hmm. It's a gem. It's in the right school district. We'll throw five or ten thousand after it. I mean, the first time home buyer, a lot of times, it's tough to compete. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Appraisals, I think, are holding steady. I think we've solved the appraisal problem, meaning that if you're paying twenty or thirty grand over, mm-hmm. that home's probably not going to appraise for twenty or thirty right. grand over. It's sure. just not. You know, it might appraise two, three, five over, but the appraisers, what you want to pay for the mm-hmm. house does not really, in my opinion, and the appraisers indicate value of the home. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. So exactly. the appraisers, yeah. there's people that are coming out of pocket with a decent amount of change to buy these homes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, I think one of one of the things that's obviously kept people going after these houses, even though they're going to half a million, whatever, right? I mean, the rates have been super low. Mm-hmm. Oh my and gosh! Yes. Obviously, <laughs> this past week and whenever this airs, you know, whatever. But I mean, it, it's probably it might even be lower by the time this airs. It's possible. Uh, yeah. But I mean, they're talking potentially under three. Well, there's uh, lenders that we know of, our lending partners that have done deals in the high twos. Um, you know, obviously we're realtors, we're not lenders, so we yeah. want to be careful what we speak about. Right. But I mean, the, the, the information is out there. Yeah. And we've talked to numerous lenders who said if you're paying, you know, 4.4% or above, yeah. it might be worth to talk to somebody for Absolutely. a refi. Yeah. So I know, um, you know, our friends that, again, I don't want to mention a lot of other people. We have a lot of different vending partners, but sure. a lot of our friends have told us when we've been in there at meetings with them uh, that obviously refis are big with, with lenders now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think That's the issue nice. that the lenders are going to have is having enough staff to keep up with that kind of volume. Wouldn't you believe it? Yeah, yes. they are, they're, they're working on the weekends. 16 hours, yeah. pulling, pulling yeah. stuff till two going in the morning. On, going in on the weekends, you know, and we're talking about people way up in the business are, are saying, hey, you know, I'm not going to ask my people to do what I'm not willing to do. Yeah. And they've been mm-hmm. going on Saturdays working because they're just so busy. Wow. A lot of refis. Again, four points or above. I would have thought yeah. it would have been higher than that. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, if you're, if you're knocking off a full percent. Right, 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 a full percent, right. You're as long as you're planning on staying there, and you're right? Term, right? I mean, yeah, if somebody's only going to be there two or three years, probably doesn't yeah. make a lot of sense. If you're looking at five, seven years plus, potentially can make some sense. Yeah, yeah. I think. Well, you, you know, you're doing some stuff with flipping and all that stuff. I follow you all the time and see what you're doing. It's, but it's it's not a it's not an emotional thing you're doing. It's a business decision. So I think that's what a refi has to be. I mean, the numbers yeah. just have to work for you, right? Yeah. So, so in regards mm-hmm. to refis, so under I'm just going to call. Jeff Underwood that way. Oh, there you go. Right. Got <laughs> um, don't you have a friend who was trying to refi their house and uh, it didn't appraise? Yeah. Yeah. I just heard um, someone I know that that's what they said. They had a certain purchase price and put so much into it and it did not appraise where yeah. it needed to be to even have it done. So, mm. Yikes. And that was what? I think Three that's years just, ago they bought it. Right? I think that's just being careful of not potentially not making the house the nicest mm-hmm. house mm-hmm. in the entire area. That's probably yeah. So that has to be something like that because I find it hard to believe we bought a house three years ago. They're not looking at any yeah. kind of purchase prices that are being off. I mean, yeah. they're just looking at what is sold. Period. Yeah, I, I f- that's interesting that that happened um, three years ago. You would think. Yeah, you figured you would easily have made easily. enough money to make a, so. a, a refi possible. Yeah. Anyway, hmm. interesting. interesting times. Yep. Interesting times. Yep. So for sellers right now, people that want to sell. Um, <laughs> This is time to it do is it. The time. I mean, it's the time, but, but they have to think rent they're thinking, afterwards. Well, what's, what, what am I going to buy? What's next? Yeah. Right. Where yeah. am I going to go? So, James, <clears throat> you did a sale recently. Uh, what what did you find with your, with your sale when you listed it and sold it? Well, we had a whole bunch of offers. So in that 300, 400 price range, we like to go live on a Friday and then to direct a lot of traffic there through our mm-hmm. open houses and things like that to get as much foot traffic in as possible. In the first day, we had four or five offers. And then Sunday, we had a couple offers. We ended up with, I think, seven. Um, seven in total got over ask for it. And they didn't want anything for uh, home warranty, no help mm-hmm. with closing, no nothing. Um, and that was you know a few months back that they, that they were that strong with their offer. Wow. And that's the one that ended up winning. Now, like what Jeff was alluding to, you know, there's people that are coming in 15, 20 over to, mm-hmm. to try to win them because it's just that competitive. Mm-hmm. And there's, there's mail-in contracts. 
yeah, on some yeah. of those price points. So it probably so makes yeah. sense as a as a listing agent to just say, hey, we're listing it on Friday, but we're not going to accept any offers. That's until a great Monday. idea. We put our, our time on the on the contract. You know, give us until Monday at five when we present all of the offers, just because yep. we expect a, a heavy volume of traffic. Yeah, I mean, sight unseen. Who would have done that mm -hmm. six, twelve months ago? <laughs> Seriously, no. I mean, the odds of that thing falling out sight unseen is mm -hmm. better, right? But uh, we talked to earlier, uh, you said, Joey, something about escalation clause. Oh, yeah. So mm -hmm. right, right, that's, we're seeing that a lot. So that listing that we did in Ahwatukee uh, that had uh, 16 um, showings day one, had five offers day one, oh. uh, four of them had an escalation clause. Mm. Four mm -hmm. out of the five. Four. Yeah. Isn't that strange? Like, I didn't think, I didn't think realtors were into it that work much. Right. I didn't think they were into it that in. knowledgeable that. I guess it depends on which one, you know, who says yeah, is the high right. 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 <laughs> right. right. One so, of them's two, add 2,000, one's three, yeah. one's five, one's ten. So, yeah, so I don't want to get into this. This has, this deal hasn't closed yet, so I don't want to get deep into it. I'll just say that, um, on uh, Section 8 of the purchase contract, mm -hmm. these realtors, uh, because there is not an escalation clause addendum or something like this, yeah, so this is something type it up yep, on there, yeah. you have to write it up on your um, on your on your Section 8, mm -hmm. and it would and it's not. It was fairly easy. I mean, they're not ultra wordy. Basically, they say we're going to offer you X price mm -hmm. right now, and we will go up. Uh, usually about a thousand dollars a a bid mm -hmm. per se. I hate to say you use the word bid, but you know it's kind of like offer. eBay almost a little bit. We'll yeah. go up a thousand dollars to a max of let's say ten thousand above what we paid, mm -hmm. right? So this is not the numbers. Let's say that you you buy a house for a hundred grand and you yeah. say we'll pay up to one ten on a thousand dollar increment. So somebody comes in at one hundred one, you go to one hundred two, yeah. right? They come in at one hundred four, you go to one hundred five. They come in at one hundred nine, you go to one ten. However, 110 is your max. Right. Yeah. And the crazy thing is on uh, that deal, it was substantially overpriced. Wow. They went another 10 grand above that, no. which they didn't have They didn't have to do, thank goodness. But you know that wouldn't appraise, and they waived the appraisal contingency. Mm. Wow. There were some extenuous circumstances in their deal. I understand kind of why they did it, mm. but that is crazy. That is crazy. Well, mm. when people I mean, have yeah. money, they... Yep. Usually when, win. when people have money, money wins. A lot of times, yes. But I feel bad for our first-time home buyers yeah, out there, yeah, that's and bad. I can't stress enough. Mm -hmm. If you're ready to buy a home, there's just there's a couple things you've got to do. You've got to be mentally ready to buy the home. Yeah, yeah. Yep. you've got to react extremely fast. Mm -hmm. Be pre-qualified or pre-approved. There's not. Let's go look without doing that. Now it's imperative you don't do that because mm -hmm. yeah, the home will it. definitely you'll definitely miss the home. Yeah, sure. In the fat pass, you could have caught a couple of them right mm -hmm. after the fact. Mm -hmm. Now you're not going to do that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you know don't play games. The yeah. game the There's game no days games. are gone. Yep. The game days are gone. Mm -hmm. And you know play to win. You know mm -hmm. if, if you might have to come in at full price, you might have to you know suck up a little of your money and not ask for closing costs mm -hmm. or things like this. Or sometimes even home warranties. I mean I hate to say it. I don't like saying this, but it's the case you're in. So, I mean I've been I've been um, opting not to work with some clients uh, now because they just don't understand. And they're not listening. And so it's just, I don't want to waste their time and my time because yeah, I'll never get yeah. it back. So yeah. sure. I think that's super important to expectation level set, especially with yes. buyers today. Especially that, now, yeah. Yeah, like how competitive this market is and how ready to pull the trigger. Like Jeff said, like you've got to be pre-qualified before because in that time you see the house and you fall in love with it, somebody's already submitting the offer. Yeah. And you just, you have to be ready to go. And that's something a lot of first time home buyers, I think, kind of struggle mm -hmm. with or, or really have to wrap their minds around is mm -hmm. how fierce this market is right now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I usually give, well, usually, I'm probably going to cut it down to one, but I usually give them two chances. Oh, there you go. Right? Three strikes, so, you're out. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so I'll, I'll say, okay, this is what we need to do. They say, well, can we do this? And I'll say, I'm going to do this this one time, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you that it's not going to be accepted. Yeah. Right? So we do it. It doesn't get accepted. I'm like, okay, that's fine. Next one, I say, okay, this is the last, last time. No more times after this. After that, I'm dropping you. Yeah. Uh, and I can say that, right? You sure can. So, so You're trying to help them. Yes. And then yeah. the second time, but then they finally, I mean, they learn their lesson after yeah. the second mm -hmm. time pretty much or sometimes even the first time. Yeah. And they, they start to listen. Okay, we need to make at least a full offer here. We can't ask for all of this stuff. Otherwise, we're going to lose it. Right. That's yeah, similar so, to what mm, you what you kind of instituted within the last. I, I have instituted a, a much more brutal program <laughs> in the year 2020. I have to say, and it, shock I'm collars. just trying. Yeah, I'm yes. just trying. Yeah, I, I brought some shock collars from James and he put on my clients. But no, it's 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 so serious right now. We just don't have the time to waste. Yeah. And so, um, in the last 
uh, about six months, I've I've fired uh, three clients. Mm-hmm. I just I, and it's nothing personal, and it, and and, I'm, and I wish them the best of luck. Sure. Right? I hope they'll find something, but they're not doing it their way. Mm-hmm. It's just not going to happen. Yeah. Clearly, it's not going to happen. So right now, I'm a little more. I I, I don't like to do this because I'm the nice guy. I'm the slow roll. Mm-hmm. I want to look at all the options. You just don't have that right now. Mm-hmm. And so 2020 is for me is I don't work with crazy. <laughs> and uh, I'm just being very upfront and honest with my people to say, hey, guys, this is what's going on. If we try it any other way but the way to win the house, yeah. then you don't want to win the house. That's right. Which means we, we, let's, we're just playing. We're just playing. Playing, we're playing a game. So yeah. let's, you know, wait till you're ready or, or, or call me. I mean, I want to help you get a house, but I'm not a tour guide and I'm, I'm, I don't play games. It's yeah. just... Well, it's interesting, too, because I think they say, what, every four to six years is when people sell their house approximately. Mm -hmm. So the last time a lot of these folks were on the market looking, it was a very different dynamic than what it is now. True. So when we try to tell these folks, like, this is a very different feel today than the last time you were on the market, you know, I think that comes as a shock and they really downplay or just don't really appreciate the significance of how how this market is today. Sure. It's yep. kind of mm-hmm. amusing. But when they see it on the MLS, like the searches that you send them, right? Yep. And then they, they say, oh, I want to take a look at this one. You're like, oh, well, that one just went on, you know, mm-hmm. in contract like 30 minutes ago. Yep. <laughs> in my searches, I always include, you know, the actives and then the ones that go pending. That way people can see how fast they go from active yeah. over to pending. And I make sure to capture that in that little email. Say, hey, make oh, sure makes, you keep track of sense. these ones that are going pending and yeah. how fast they do it, because that's going to give you an idea of how fast this market overturn is. Hmm. And I guess mm-hmm. I need to add my pendings back in there and the UCBs. Yeah. I do it just I for that, just for that reason that's in this market good, right now. That's a good idea. And I mean, mm-hmm. I, I think all of us would take our clients out to see a house, but I mean, mm-hmm. you know, in the past when you look at days on market, especially at certain price points, yeah, I mean, you know, a day or two on market, mm-hmm. they've got offers. Mm-hmm. I, it's no more like you don't have to call and say, "Do you have any offers?" I go, "How many offers do you have? How much time are you giving us if we go see it?" Yeah, right. And I think most agents. Um, I might take that back. Um, I think some agents, uh, you know, we always say, you know, the top 20 make 80% of the money. Now it's the top 10 that make 90% of the money. Um, most agents that have been around a while or know what they're doing are taking the time to be educated in real estate and do the best thing for their client. Uh, we'll communicate these things with you. I, I find it very easy to talk to the agents and, you know, they want to sell the house and we want to buy it. But, um, you know, I'll go out with my clients and I'll take good losses. You know, you come and say, Jeff, I can't, I need some closing costs. I can offer a thousand more than ask and ask for the closing costs. I mean, that's just, that's a good offer, guys, right? Yeah. That's not a game offer. That's a good mm-hmm. offer. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if we're going to get it, but I'll, I'll roll with that sometimes, you know, because um, like you were saying, Joy, that you give them a chance to, to maybe fail. But there's some people that they just don't have. You know all that extra money, so and yeah. that's a solid offer. Yeah. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that. I'll yeah. go. I'll be by your beside, a hundred percent through those. I'll lose to those deals, mm-hmm. um, but I'm not losing to the person that goes. Well, I just you know I like to wheel and deal, and I'm going to offer ten thousand less. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you got to uh, retain best, yeah. another agent. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So are most of the buyers that you guys are working with, um, are they going from renting to buying, or are they? Selling no. another house and then going. Yeah, I, I, no, a lot of people are cashing in from their purchases four mm-hmm. or five years ago and then rolling that over into their new purchase. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think a couple second okay. homes too. Yeah, second homes. I think there's been some <coughs> trade ups. You know, with family yeah. and everything. You know, yeah. you buy that. You know, first home and it's a you know a three two. You know, maybe no pool or something, and you've done well, and um, then you look for that little slightly bigger home or people with bigger homes. You know, my age with my kids, they're all in college now, so you know, we would be trending the opposite way. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing, too, is you guys know that when when the inexpensive home is selling for 350 and you want to live in the same area, mm-hmm. if you're trending down, I'm not sure how much lower you're going to go than that, mm-hmm. right? Price wise, and if you go up, the, the other homes are going to go up higher so that we see people migrating. You know, we got a kind of that peripheral town thing going on now. You know, <laughs> Santan, Queen Creek, mm-hmm. Florence, Maricopa, Casa Grande, far on the west side. Um, those areas have some booming houses. Levine, now that the freeway went in down there, you know, some of the good yeah. year. Yeah. It's crazy. So mm-hmm. we're back to that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think drive till you qualify. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> that's what they used to call it back in 04. Yeah. Or five or six. I'm not sure if it's drive till you qualify. <laughs> it's, you know, to, to, to get the house. You know the the basic house. You know the ones in the city are just a little more a little more spendier, and and some people just you know they just can't find what they're looking for in the city. So you're kind of forced forced to drive out there. I don't know. Yeah, definitely some of the peripheral homes are. Mm-hmm. I was have, have you guys been out to the Australia, um, Australia Mountains out there recently? 
No, not recently. Not, not recently. Okay, so I used to do some hunting out there when I was at ASU. You know, I live in the East. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Okay. No. <laughs> I, me too. Right, me too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? So I, I did some hunting out in Australia with friends when I was in college. This was like 100 years ago. And a friend of mine said, yeah, there's a community out there. I said, yeah, there, there isn't. I can guarantee there's not a community out there. I know what it is, and it's pretty small. So I drove out there with a client. And it is amazing. There's a lake with a yacht club out there. It's wow. called Canamia. There's 55 plus. I mean, it is an amazing area. They're building, and there's some you know non-55 plus homes, but it's a nice little area out there. Yeah. I'm just surprised how far south. And you can see the 303 mm -hmm. is just going to push down south through the community. I think eventually it'll loop up around the Australia Mountains and probably hook down to Maricopa or you know, take people around Phoenix a long way like that because you see it coming. You know they're mm -hmm. thinking that mm -hmm. with the build and some of the, the land that's available. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, crazy. Mm -hmm. I just wonder how long we can keep this pace up, though. I mean, with it's how crazy the market is right now, <laughs> right? Yeah, it's. I, I mean, I don't it's, know. we need more people to put their house on the market. Well, we need them to be realistic, probably with the price, because that's what I heard at the beginning, right? Somebody might be listing at four hundred. But their house isn't as nice as the one that just sold for four hundred. Yeah, so. I, I think most of the people that are listing their houses that are nice have good realtors that are giving a good price for them, and that's why mm -hmm. they go fast and they go a little bit above. But you know, now we're talking about sellers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So a little different conversation. You know, when we have a seller, um, I, I am slightly dismayed uh, about how a lot of us treat our like biggest asset we'll, we'll ever own in our lives. Mm -hmm. um, so people look at their house, and you know, you can live any way you want. That, that's that's perfect. That's how, that's how it should be. But you see your neighbor's house sell for mm -hmm. four hundred, and you go, "Wow, I have the same house." Yeah. Maybe let's sell mine for four hundred. But if you you know pound for pound, dollar for dollar, not the same. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. not the same. Right? Neighbor has a yeah. pool, pretty well done, and it's not the fact they put a lot of money into it. It's the fact that they just kept it. Not, you know, the grass is trimmed. Yeah. You know, the beer bottles off the front yard. I mean, you've got to do these little tiny things. A lot of them equate to no money, just a little little muscle, little mm -hmm. little work to make your house look nice, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it makes a big impression on people when they come yeah. in. And that was Absolutely. like those two homes that we previewed up in North Phoenix last week that were oh, both yeah. at the exact same price. Yeah. Two very different homes. One had a pool, one didn't have a pool. Yep. One was recently remodeled and flit or uh, fixed and it had, you know, new paint, new cab, like everything flip, in it looked flip, nice. Yeah. Yet another one, a couple of couple of homes down that mm -hmm. had a pool in the back, but it was very busy. There was like how many different types of. It flooring. was nice, nice, yeah. nice, nice cellar. Uh, not a bad house, clean, but you know every room was an island. Um, <laughs> lots of stuff going on. Lots of different color. Lots of different flooring. Yeah. I think we counted. I, I I kid you not. There might be more. I think we, inside the roughly fifteen or sixteen hundred or less square foot house. Yeah, we counted fourteen different types of floors wow. every every room yes. had its own every hallway had its own yeah still it was an awesome house wow. like you know and if you look Very at the artsy, room craftsy individually it looked like a great room but then when you take that room and you stack it with the next one it just didn't kind of make sense yeah uh, but both of those houses were priced the exact same and you look mm. at it and you're like it's kind of kind of weird you know like and the comps were way low it seemed to me they were way over and both of them on the market for 10 to 30 days 30 days so have you checked them recently are they still on the market no i can though yeah, yeah. So again, that those hmm. you know the I, the comps didn't support yeah. that, which was weird because yeah, I yeah because we I tried to reverse engineer the price like going off a of price per square foot like just yeah. trying to figure out where Couldn't they figured up out. these numbers and mm -hmm. I think that's also a problem that some of the sellers get into when they get an agent and the agent says yeah we'll sell it for whatever yeah. you want yeah. well yeah. it's only worth what somebody's willing to pay right so you can list it at whatever you want all day sure. um, but again that expectation management that we have to do on both sides of the equation is, mm -hmm. is important and you I just buy it and then you market it as an investment property with three separate rental areas <laughs> right you want beach theme we got you you want space oh, there was, theme there was, we got you there was a lot of themes going on there buddy there was I mean the, 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 the owner was super nice and it wasn't dirty it was it was it was it was just done eclectic. it was eclectic yeah it was done yeah. nice but yeah. just mm. eclectic and you're like you know for the common person you know i've seen some of your flips and everything you know obviously people will make it their own but you know the a, t a certain type of flooring you know all the ceiling fans matching mm. you know the same granite all the rooms it's that it's that nice congruent nice flow through the house mm. that i think yeah. most mm -hmm. people are looking for but you can come in you could put a purple wall in it and accent it if you want to or mm. do some different things but this yeah, yes, the one was just like that, different. a fix and flip. So <laughs> sure. it was just well done. I mean, yeah. they, they did a great job. And the other one was a nice house. Very nice. But just, you know, I don't know. Hmm. And both of them priced the exact same. And price it just the same. It didn't make sense. Hmm. Yeah. So. Well, and that's when you also talk to them about buying a car, right? You got your base model, mm -hmm. and then you've got your fully loaded model. You, 
Yeah. You know, which one are you going to buy yeah. based on your budget? Well, right? you know, one had a pool in the subdivision, similar square footage, good sized properties. The other one didn't have a pool next to a, a grade school, but nicely done. That was the flip. Mm. I mean, they, okay. but they're both, you know, in that 320 range, and mm. we were just struggling with the comps. I mean, I don't know. That's yeah. crazy. Mm. All right. Yep. Interesting. Yeah. So what's next for the team? Our world three home domination, group. I think. Is <laughs> <what> <laughs> yes. World domination. Yes, yeah. World domination. So you guys, you like yeah. looking for other. Team members? We're looking for other team members. We, um, you know, there's different um, uh, facets of every office. You know, with the comp- companies you're in, they might have a commercial division, a property management division. So we at R3 have basically mimicked our company's divisions. Mm-hmm. So we have a property management guy that all he does is property management. We have we had a commercial guy, so we're looking for another commercial agent on our team right now. Um, we uh, residential people we specialize in, you know, say uh, buyers and sellers. We do some mm-hmm. new builds, things like that. So. Um, you know, I just think it's important to have some 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 specialty people on our team. Right. You know that who wants to do property management said no one ever yeah. basically <laughs> in the world except our friend Edwin. He's the only guy that ever said yes. So he's our go-to guy there. And again, we had a commercial guy that none of us really feel that uh, want to get into commercial. So we're looking for a commercial agent on our team. Yeah. We want to have right. twenty agents by the end of twenty twenty. We have enough uh, business lead sources, people to call that we feel like you know. We could we could support that. Right. If we're not right. there, we're not there, and yeah. we're very selective of who we bring in. So yeah. So if your name starts with J, J it has to start with J. So <laughs> you guys. So if you ever need a new home, you guys there would you be qualified. You're, yeah. you're, you're halfway there. <laughs> your name start with J. Correct. So how would agents reach out to you if, if they wanted to speak with you? Well, all of us, obviously, we do a lot of social media and stuff like that, so you see us over there. But, um, you know, Jeff Caton, my phone number is 602-320-7547. Call me, text me. Uh, you know, our agents, I'm just very adamant, people on our team, we answer our phones, right? Mm-hmm. That's another big one. Try to get an agent <laughs> to answer their phone. Good yeah. luck with that. But uh, we do answer our phones. Um you know, we do come from contribution. I mean, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. We love talking with you. I mean, you guys work for, you guys work for, we all work mm-hmm. for different companies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We've been friends a long time. It yeah. doesn't matter to yeah. us. We yeah. don't, you know, yeah. we just want Absolutely. everybody to be happy. So. All right. Oh, we should probably say a shout out to Sherry, right? Oh, yeah. She's I nice. It's weird when she's not Sherry here. She's Griffin. Like, yeah. She's yeah. Really With security title. Yeah. You've she's, known her a long time. Oh, God, I have. She's so bossy. It's not <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. She kind of does. She yeah. is bossy. Yeah. Oh, God. She's not kind of bossy. She <laughs> is bossy. She's clearly very bossy. So, But we love her. Yeah, that's that's obviously, um, you know, security is one of our, our our preferred vendors we have. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. They do a great job. Yeah, All right. Been great super team. great. All yeah. Right. Yeah. Anything else you guys want to share before we get in the ring? Oh, so they don't, they, they're they looking at you like you're crazy because they have no right. idea what's coming up now. Right. I'm good. No, good. Right, here we go. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. What do you think the reason is that many agents are not successful? We'll kind of let whoever wants to answer can answer. Uh, laziness. Mm. Mm. All right. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. That's yeah. true. Yeah. That's a true one. Anybody else want to share? I'd say misplaced effort. Like nobody, when you're first getting into this, this was a, something that I kind of struggled with when I first came into real estate was not knowing what to do. And, of course, when you first start off, you end up getting invited to all these events and these, you know, uh, functions where there's a lot of other agents. But – you're not going to those functions trying to sell real estate to other realtors, right? <laughs> yeah. um, so figuring out where you actually can get business from, I think, is a big obstacle for a lot of people. Yeah, there's a lot of noise. Yeah, like, yes. I think Jeff, you kind of coined that Oof. for me. It's a, everybody's. There's always something that somebody's trying to get you to buy or something yeah. as a new agent. Squirrels and flashbulbs. Yes, <laughs> yeah. there's a lot of that. So. I'll throw, I'll throw one other yeah. thing in there, too. So I think um, I always tell everybody, work an honest eight-hour workday, right? Because oh. I've been in businesses for a long time. And I mean, if you're part-time, I get it. But mm-hmm. define what part-time is, right? Mm-hmm. Is it an hour a day? Is it two hours a day? And then what I recommend to you do is take your eight-hour day or your part-time day, write it on a piece of paper. Don't tell me. You're probably going to lie to me anyway. <laughs> but go home and show that to your husband or your wife mm-hmm. and say, honey, Remember how you said you said mm-hmm. I stole the mucho loco ask on before she came home? <laughs> I mean, I know we all work. I get it. But I said, take that, take that piece of paper, show it to your spouse, and say, are you proud of me or disappointed with me today? Because mm-hmm. here's what I did today. Here's what I did. That's and I, ha- I have a feeling that the, the, the 90% that aren't doing as well, that, that page wouldn't look like it should. Yeah. I'm just I'm being like, honest, that's guys. That's true. Wow. Yeah. That's a good one. That's true. Yeah. That's really good. Kind of how about a favorite, true. yeah, favorite mobile app? It doesn't have to be real estate. I don't want to say anything else. 
was going to say something funny, but it might have been. Yeah, it's probably, not as probably dumb. Right, probably. We've written mobile. We were kind of talking about it. I use Maps all the time. So. There you okay. go. Hey, oh, works. yeah, Google Maps. I can't, I can't live without Google Maps. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's yeah. a good one. I can't find my way home from here. <laughs> yeah, we've talked about this before. My two that I use a lot, obviously, Flex... Flex MLS mm-hmm. is, you know, th- and that's something where, you know, I'm an app guy. I mean, I'm 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 a I'm a, I'm a road person. I'm I'm a field salesperson. So if it really if it doesn't have an app, I'm not ultra excited about it. Um, MLS is something where it's better on the laptop, right? It, it's stronger on the laptop, mm-hmm. I think so. Yeah. But the but the Flex MLS app just gets you enough information to keep you going in the field. Mm-hmm. Uh, we use uh, Sync Commission Inc. for mm-hmm. our CRM. It's amazing. Um, I'm on that thing. I'm on that. It's a is pretty my, good app too. It's a pretty good app. They, they've gotten better. You know, they've they've changed a couple things. It's super strong. But I'm on that thing daily, mm-hmm. like every day. I guarantee for 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 a decent amount, calling people, texting people, emailing. And then um, doesn't Sherry doesn't Sherry Griffin have an app? Security, security one security, app. Security yeah. one app. Right. Yeah. That's amazing too. It's a good one. Yeah, it is a good one. Definitely. It actually is a, a pretty good app. It does a lot of different things. Yeah, it makes got, you look good. Yeah, it's got right. some calculators in yeah. there. It's just yeah. got like little things that you might you really have to play around with it. If you if you're with Security Title and that's one of your your partners, mm-hmm. get that downloaded onto your phone because it does a little more than you think. Yeah, you just <laughs> got to get absolutely. in and play with it. I, I mean, that's what they want to see. Clients do. Yeah. Netsheet. What's the net? Right. Yeah. Netsheet. Here's mm-hmm. how yeah, much Netsheet, you can make. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. easy to calculate. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. How about your? Uh, let's let's try a different one today. Okay. How about your? Uh, Favorite song or yeah. artist on the radio today? Wow. Oh, on the radio today? Yeah. Oh, God. Man, no. that's a tough Nobody? one. I, I live in the past. Yeah. I, 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 can't, I can't do a lot yeah, of the stuff that's on here. the radio. Um, okay, then. Yeah. A lot of Brantley Gilbert is kind of what I was, I was Okay, to. favorite genre. So country? Yeah. Country. Country. Right. Country. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm a too. little bit rock and roll. Yeah. Oh. A lot of it rock and roll. So you have no a, country. <laughs> so like the old school stuff. It, for everything from Eric Clapton to Slipknot. All right. Yeah. Wow. It's, it's, right. I run the big, gamut. That is a big gap. And you yeah, still li- you still listen to Hanson? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> from the top ropes. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember that? Somebody uh, was in. Yeah, someone was asking. They said their favorite song was that Mba. Mba. Yeah. Mba. Yeah. Like, yeah. What? What's yeah. that? Yeah. And Joey goes, oh, isn't that Hanson? <laughs> I'm like, oh, what up, no, early Joey, 90s? Don't, yeah. don't even say those kind of things if you know it. Don't even say it. I know. Oh, okay. One right, more here, we go. here we go. Here we go. This is beautiful. What is that, velvet? Uh, I was just kidding, Joey. Uh, no, you're not. not. He needs his monocle. <laughs> no, I, can, I, I, I think. I, I, was this the same? How long have these questions been oh, in there? Yeah. Is that your same one? Well, yeah. Do a different one. Give, me, give, me, give me another one because that was our uh, one from uh, last time. Ooh, well, let's see if I have another one. Oh, yeah, there is one in there. I don't know. So this will be the one well, from the time. Three this will be the one from the time before. I hope not. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes, it is. Really? Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Here. Yeah, yeah, here. Can Just take your pick. Yeah, give me some. Give me another one here. All right. yeah, but these the guys are the first questions. time in. Oh, uh, here you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah so those are the, yeah, those are, that was from well, show Jeff one Caton, and two. Well, okay. just so you know, is a regular contributor to the weekly well, he's yeah. podcast. Yeah. I, like, I love you guys. Yeah, good. <laughs> All right, that, here we go. This is a brand different. new one. Okay. Totally different. What did you want to be growing up? Ah, Whoa, that's okay. a good one. Here we go. Are we all answering this question? All of us, right? Do you guys just start off there? All right. Yes, go ahead. What did you want to be growing up? Uh, twofold. First off, a rock star. That oh, yeah. did not work out yet. Uh-huh. Um, yet. Yes. Nice. And second, a cop. I actually wanted to be a ah, cop most of my life. Yeah. So the perfect thing would have been you were part of the police. Yes. Yeah. Oh, there. I like it. Oh. See what you did there. Wow. <laughs> there <we go>. nice. <laughs> uh, so I didn't really know what I wanted to be until I kind of fell into it. Um, coming out of my hometown in Crescent City, California, if everybody's ever heard of it, it's tiny and it's kind of a time capsule that time forgot about. So when I graduated high school, I went into the Air Force and I found out that they had a canine program and that was all I ever wanted to do from that point. And that's canine all I've done program. Ever, ever since. Mm-hmm. And so I go to work and play with dogs all day. Nice. Cool. Dogs and sell cool. real estate, obviously. But yeah. that, was, that was what I wanted to do. And I originally got into real estate was because I needed a way to fund the dog training dream. Um, <laughs> and I figured, oh, I'll sell real estate, and that'll allow me the ability to get a board and train facility where I can train dogs at. And then I realized very go. quickly, real estate's a hard market to get into, <laughs> and I have to have a way to get in with people. So I started training dogs as a way to fund the real estate dream, as a way to fund yeah. the dog training dream there again. You so. so you train them for... 
the armed forces then or what? So I that's mean, what I did for police? that was what I did for ten years. Okay. Um, I trained dogs for the military, go overseas wow. and do deployments and things like that. Now I train in home pets, but I also do as much work as I can with Luke Air Force Base. That's where I started my canine career. So I go out there as often as I can and help those guys out. All right, that's um, cool. Shout out to them on Instagram, the there Luke Air Force Base Canine Section, yeah. and uh, the police departments. Anytime we can have the opportunity to go and train dogs with those guys, it's always fun to get chewed on. Do you ever get to? Yeah, I was going to ask you. Do you wear the big suit? Oh yeah, all the time. Wow, it's how fun. scary is it? The first time you do it, it's really kind of... You wet your pants? Yeah, it's it's, it's it's a different sensation, <laughs> right? Because like you've got this animal that's 70 to 100 saying. pounds looking at you like he wants to make a snack of you, mm -hmm. and it's very unnatural for you to willingly have that happen. But then once you get used to it, it's actually really fun, and it's, yeah. it becomes a game. And watching the dog's gears turn and seeing how you're manipulating his desire to bite you, it's it's really fun. Is it you like the Belgian Malinois are the most, one of the more... Malinois, yeah. Yeah, yeah Malinois, that's one of the more yeah. common ones now. Um, the Dalmatian effect is a thing that comes in where a dog gets popular because of a movie or whatever, mm -hmm. and it gets overbred, and there's all mm -hmm. kinds of problems that happen. Mm -hmm. So German Shepherds had that happen sure. uh, quite a while ago, and mm -hmm. now Malinois, since they've started to become mainstream a little bit more, I'm hoping that it doesn't happen, knock on wood. Yeah, those guys. Um, but, yeah, dogs. they are one of the primary breeds right now for you know police and military roles. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You've gone all over for dog training. Mine's. Mm -hmm. Except yeah. for my house. <laughs> <laughs> mine's not Mine's not very exciting. I, I think I wanted to be a gunfighter when I was a little kid. But that's, not, uh, that's not exciting? <laughs> no, it's exciting, but there's not really a big calling for it. Yeah, you're undefeated. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, then I got, uh, you know, I, I've kind of always done what I wanted to do. I, I, I was a big, um, I went to ASU, obviously, in fraternity. I, was, I loved to the party and restaurants and bars, so I got into that business. And then I liked to smoke uh, cigars, so I got into that business. Mm -hmm. And then I wanted to get into real estate. I did want to, I think, like later, I wanted to be a professional motorcycle racer. Yeah, like, you know that. that. Yeah, I'm yeah. just not good. I'm not that good. It's not, <laughs> I'm not, I've had a lot of crashes and <laughs> it's too expensive. I made, I think I've spent like $20,000 and I've made like, I'm, I think I got $1,000 in sponsorships. There so you go. There you go. it wasn't very lucrative. It just wasn't a very good business decision. <laughs> and it hurt too bad. So. I bet. I bet. Yeah. Well, thank you guys for being in here. Thanks, yeah, for, having thanks for having us. Fun. Amazing yeah. show as usual. That's yeah, cool. that great yeah. information. I'm sorry I left my mutual Luca mask at home. That's all right. Okay, I got an extra one. I'll bring, one if I'll bring him next. I'll bring him next. Time. <laughs> yeah. We have some extra if you need it. Used. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Also, agents, uh, don't forget the webinars that we do for a security title as well as the live classes. You can get the information from your rep. All right. Until next time, have a fantastic day. You all take care. Adios. <laughs> Great job. Yeah, it was great. Good job, guys. I like those random parts.